Thanks so much. So we all have things that we would love to change about the world, and we've heard a lot of them today. Maybe we want to make equal pay a reality in our workplace. Maybe it's that we want to be an ally in the gay rights movement. Or maybe it's that we want to make a difference in the fight against climate change. Whatever it is that we want to change, we assume that you need to be a strong and powerful leader to make that change. And when we look at ourselves, we often see weaknesses. We see vulnerabilities. And we assume that those vulnerabilities are disqualifying. But in fact, vulnerability is exactly what you need to make change, because vulnerability is your power. Creating change requires leaders to do two things, to be vulnerable and to share their true stories. Because when you open up and share your story with the world, people will begin to see themselves in what you are saying and embrace the change that you are trying to make. When I was in high school, I was a Boy Scout. This is me at my Eagle Scout Court of Honor. Um, earning the Eagle Scout rank was something I worked really hard for. It was a big challenge. But during the same years that I was working toward that rank, I was actually grappling with a much bigger challenge. Because during these years, the Boy Scouts of America was having a national debate about whether to allow openly gay scouts and leaders into the organization. It was really charged, and there were a number of people who had actually been kicked out of the Boy Scouts for coming out publicly. And at the same time, there was a growing pushback. People who were calling on the Boy Scouts to end their anti-gay policy. There were even Eagle Scouts who were sending back their badges in protest. To be honest, I really had no idea where I stood on this issue. I was really confused. And that's because two years before that, my brother had come out as gay. And when that happened, I really denied it for a long time. I didn't want to think it was true or accept it. And when I finally did, I was really reluctant. Because deep down, even though I wanted to support my brother, I still thought that being gay was wrong. And so when it came to the Boy Scouts issue, I really didn't know which side to take. I was confused. But that all changed when I came across a new story. It was the story of Zach Walls. This is Zach. He's a straight Eagle Scout, but he actually was raised by two gay moms. And he wrote a book about that experience, a book that I happened to get my hands on when I was in high school. And in the book, Zach talks about what it was like growing up in a Midwestern town where his family really didn't fit the mold. He talks about the skepticism and even the outright hostility that his family faced from people who didn't think two moms could possibly raise a son. He also talks about the compounding difficulty when one of his moms was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And all of these difficulties were things that made Zach and his family really different from his community. But at the same time, Zach shared some of the things that he had in common. Things like dinner shared around the kitchen table every night. Things like neighbors who would plow your driveway if your snowblower broke. Things like summer camps spent with family and friends. And along the way, Zach talks about the values that he learned from his two moms and from his Boy Scout troop. And it just so happens that a lot of those values overlapped. They were values like trustworthiness, loyalty, bravery, and kindness. There were values that any American and any Boy Scout could embrace. And because of that, they were values that I could embrace. And so when I read Zach's story, everything just clicked for me. I saw myself immediately. Zach showed me that being gay and being moral were not mutually exclusive. And for me at the time, that was a revelation. It totally changed my mind. I felt so strongly and passionately about this after I read Zach's book that I also knew exactly where I stood on the Boy Scouts issue. I knew that we had to become a more inclusive organization. It was the only right thing to do. And I felt so passionately about this that I actually started to take action because I was a high school journalist at the time and I thought that I could use my skills to tell stories about Boy Scouts in my community. I started interviewing people. I hoped that their legitimacy and their stories could help convince a large portion of the American public that the Boy Scouts needed to be more inclusive. I even reached out to Zach because I wanted to use his platform to take my storytelling effort national. In other words, I wanted to do for others what Zach had done for me. But what was it that Zach had done for me? How did he change my mind and inspire me to take action? Well, it comes back to those two things I talked about in the beginning, vulnerability and storytelling. Because in his book, Zach doesn't present a perfect or polished version of himself. Even though he's smart and athletic and well-spoken, he also talks about the difficulties he's, he faced 
especially being in a closet of his own, because even though he wasn't gay, he had to hide the fact of his two moms from a lot of his community. And when he shared that, when he emotionally exposed himself in that way, I saw myself completely in his story. Because I was also an outwardly successful high school student who was hiding something deeper. And I was also someone who was trying to hide a gay family member from the rest of the world. This vulnerability is so powerful, and we can actually look into this on a scientific level. That's something that Paula Niemthal at the University of Wisconsin-Madison has done. And her research shows that as humans, we are actually experts at detecting authenticity. We know exactly if someone's being real with us. And when it comes to leaders, we are pretty uncomfortable if leaders put on show or put on pretense. But on the other hand, we're really comfortable around leaders who are recognizing uncertainty or difficulty. Ultimately, Paula's research shows that we are more likely to embrace the vision of a leader if we can recall emotionally resonating with them. If you think about that, that's exactly what Zach was doing. By emotionally exposing himself and recognizing those difficult moments in his life, I resonated with him so deeply that I embraced his viewpoint and actually took action to try to achieve the goals that he was outlining in his book. But vulnerability, as powerful as it is, actually isn't the only force at work here. Because he took that vulnerable message and he actually channeled it through the power of storytelling. Storytelling engages our brain in a way that really other forms of information don't. Because on a neurological level, there's something different happening. Paul Zak, who's a researcher at the Claremont Graduate University, has actually looked into this, has looked into what happens in our brain when we experience a story. And the first thing that happens is cortisol surfaces. Cortisol is a chemical that usually is involved with stress. But since stories inherently involve conflict and difficulty, we experience cortisol. And it's our brain's way of telling us that we should pay attention, that it's important for us to know what happens next. The second chemical that surfaces is oxytocin. And oxytocin is a social chemical. It's what allows us to empathize with the leader, to resonate with them. And finally, the third chemical that comes up is dopamine. Dopamine, a lot of us know as a feel-good chemical. We experience dopamine if we just scroll through Instagram, if we eat something we really love. But we also experience dopamine if we read a story, because it's our brain's way of rewarding us for our attention, of making us feel good. So when we experience a story, there's this neurological cocktail happening. It engages our attention, it allows us to empathize with the leader of a story, and it simply makes us feel good. So it's really no wonder that if you combine that power of storytelling with the power of vulnerability, the results are incredible and you can change minds. You can inspire other people to take action. Now, this works in so many different contexts, so I wanna give you one more example. This is Cleopatra Kombogo. She's a trans woman in Uganda. And in 2014, she was studying to be a geneticist. She was at university, more or less minding her own business. And she was also going through her gender transition. But then something really bad happened because the country that she lived in passed a law that criminalized homosexuality with lifelong imprisonment. And so out of fear for her own safety, Cleopatra fled her country. She moved to Kenya with her partner, Nelson. And even though this law was nullified just a couple of months later, there were still so many challenges that remained for queer and trans people in Uganda. For one, it was almost impossible to access affirmative health care. And this meant that a lot of queer and trans folks were actually dying because they could not access the life-saving drugs that they needed. And all the while, there were conservative political leaders who were weaving stories about queer and trans people that really vilified them, that put them in a bad light. And so eventually, Cleopatra realized something, that there needed to be a counter-narrative. There needed to be a new story. And so she became the subject of a video series and eventually a documentary. The documentary was called The Pearl of Africa. And it was really a complete story of her life. It was nuanced, and it went beyond the sheer fact of her trans identity. It showed the good moments alongside the bad moments. Moments when she was simply recovering from surgery, but also moments when she was experiencing joy with her partner, Nelson. And when this documentary was published, it was a total revelation in Uganda, because that was a country where people really never talked openly about sex and gender. And the story that Cleopatra told was a love story. It was in its own way a universal story that allowed people to resonate with it and to start seeing Ugandans and queer and trans Ugandans not as enemies imported from the West, but as actually members of their own community, people who grew up alongside them, 
And so by being vulnerable at a moment when her, when her very life was at risk, Cleopatra was able to create a new conversation. She opened up space for queer and trans people all over her country to start coming out and demanding the space, the services, and the rights that they deserved. And if we think about why this is so powerful, it all comes back to those same two things that Zach was relying on, vulnerability and storytelling. Because Cleopatra did not have political power, or really any power at all, except the power of her vulnerability. She exposed herself emotionally. She showed people the difficult moments of her life. And this really shifted how Ugandans looked at queer and trans people. It showed them as members of their own community. And Cleopatra took that power of vulnerability and she channeled it through storytelling too. This was especially powerful in Uganda because in this country, people had used storytelling for generations to pass down culture. And so when she tapped into that and she used her vulnerable message in the medium of storytelling, she was able to rise above the political clashes, to create a new conversation, and to really move the needle forward for queer and trans people in Uganda. Now, when I was in college, I was going through a change of my own. Because years after my brother had come out and I had learned to accept him and embrace him, I started to realize that I was also queer, that I was discovering my own sexuality. And at the time, I was still really involved in the Boy Scouts of America. By this point, I was a volunteer. I was doing some national projects, working with people from all over the country. And it was work that I really enjoyed. By this time, the Boy Scouts had ended their anti-gay policy, which meant that I could be out and I could still be involved in the Boy Scouts. But I wasn't. Because even though the policy allowed gay members, the culture really hadn't changed at all. And I felt that if I came out, I would jeopardize the community that I held so dear. I was really afraid that I would lose the friends that I valued so much. And so as the years went on, I came out in basically every other part of my life, but not the Boy Scouts. And eventually I decided that needed to change, that I needed to include them in my community too. And even years later, I didn't think the culture had changed enough. So I started to think to myself that I need to change the culture in some way. And I knew that any change I could make would rely on the power of vulnerability and storytelling. And so I decided to share my story. I decided to share my story about what it was like to be queer in the Boy Scouts of America. And I got together with three of my closest scouting friends. We published a series of personal essays. They went live on a national platform in the Huffington Post in 2017. And when we did this, no one had ever done something like this before. Even when the Boy Scouts were in the national spotlight debating their policy years ago, there was really no storytelling like this. These messages were really devoid of vulnerability and it was very hard to get a sense of what people were actually experiencing. And so when we did this in such a big and vulnerable way, we really cracked open a silence in the Boy Scouts of America. And in the truest sense of the word, we started a national conversation. The day those stories went live, I was completely flooded with messages. I heard from people like Travis in Texas, like Justin in Massachusetts, like Kelsey in Arizona, people from all over the country who were all saying some variation of the same thing. Thank you so much for doing this because you are making a difference and we are proud of you. Those messages were so overwhelming for me. I felt so loved and supported. But at the same time, there was a message that was even more powerful, it was different. There were messages from other queer scouts, people who told me that they never thought it would be safe to come out in the Boy Scouts of America until they read my story. People who told me that they never felt seen in anyone else's story until they read ours. And people who confided in me truths about themselves that they had never shared with anyone else. And so by being vulnerable and opening ourselves up in this way, we truly shifted the culture in the Boy Scouts of America and opened up space for a whole new kind of conversation. This worked so well for the same two reasons that Zach and Cleopatra's story did. Because as a lifelong Boy Scout, I had built in authenticity. I wasn't simply an outsider demanding change. I was someone who grew up in this organization, who people could trust and see themselves in. And I also didn't hide from the more difficult parts of my story. I shared the shame that I had staying in the closet all those years. I also shared the fear that I had about coming out. And by exposing myself in that way, I allowed people to resonate with me and to embrace the vision that I had for more inclusive Boy Scouts. And finally, I channeled it through storytelling because I knew that it would engage attention, it would allow people to empathize with me, and ultimately make them feel good for having read my story.
So it took me years, but I realized that I had the same power as Zach Walls, that I could change people's minds, inspire them to action, and to change the culture in this organization that I cared about so much. A little more than a year ago, I was at a National Boy Scout conference, and I was there to accept a Distinguished Service Award. The day before the award show, I stopped by the Rainbow Cafe. It was a space on campus for queer folks and allies. And when I was there, I picked up a small patch. It had a rainbow square knot on it. And I put that patch on my uniform right next to my Eagle Scout patch. And the next day, I walked out on stage in front of 8,000 Boy Scouts, my parents, some of my closest friends, and the organization's top leadership. And I was wearing my rainbow patch, my sign of queer pride. And I was being fully celebrated and fully embraced for who I was and what I bring to this organization. In other words, I finally was out, I was proud, and I had become the change that I wanted to see all of those years ago. So now I want you to think back to that change that you want to see, that injustice that just eats away at you, or that problem that you feel powerless to make a difference against. And now realize that you have all the power that you need because you have the power to tap into your vulnerability and to share your story. The trick is you just need the courage to do it. It took me years to realize that I had the same power as Zach. For Cleopatra, she had to flee her own country before she realized that she could push back against institutional homophobia. But when we finally embrace this power, the results are incredible. We can make changes beyond what we had ever imagined. And so today I challenge you all to get there much faster than I did. Tap into your power now, because you can be the change that you want to see. Thank you.